happy holiday season, Twin Flames. Lisey here for another video, another topic that uh, one of my clients actually asked me is how do I stop mothering my Twin Flame or fathering them if you're Divine Masculine, right? Um, a lot of us are healing codependency in our Twin Flame unions. Um, there's a lot of patterns that are coming up to heal, some things that you have been experiencing your whole life, patterns that are coming up into your reality with your twin flame even it doesn't have to be a false twin flame um, that seem to be like every relationship you've ever had and especially if you go back to your parents you might notice that you have had these sort of patterns with one or both of your parents too so we're healing it all the way down to the root so how do you stop momming or dadding your twin flame what do I mean by that first of all um, your twin flame is your divine counterpart they're you right? They're your ultimate lover, your divine guru, your counterpart in all of creation. But a lot of us are still stuck on the separation consciousness idea of what we call soulmate relationships. And that, let me just explain this for a minute. In the Twin Flames Universe community, um, go to twinflamesuniverse.com to join and connect and link in with that community. Um, there is a term called soulmates. And a lot of you who are just learning about twin flames are using the word soulmate, but you actually mean twin flame. What you're talking about, we can all define this one term. A twin flame is your ultimate lover, uh, your divine counterpart, your perfect partner, the one that you know in your heart is created to be with you, loves you unconditionally, um, you're meant to live your life purpose together. Some people call that a soulmate, but we call it a twin flame. A soulmate is anybody who rides along together with you in this lifetime and then as you evolve they kind of fall off fall away right a twin flame is your perfect romantic partner a soulmate is someone they could be a family member a friend a, a lover like a spouse or someone that isn't your twin flame it's anybody who's not your twin flame right anyway that aside so how do you not parent your twin flame so like i mentioned a lot of us were um kind of accustomed to these soulmate patterns in our relationships where there's transactions transaction is like if i do this you do that if i um, give you money you're loyal to me or if i um say nice words to you then you love me that's transactional you might think, well, gosh, like, I really love when people say nice words to me, but think about this. That doesn't make you love them, does it? Their nice words don't cause you to feel a certain way. You just feel that way because, right? You feel love for that person just because you love them, not because of the word they said or what they did. It's a loving jest, a loving act to speak kind things and to perform kind deeds but those things in themselves don't produce the love. The love comes from within. So a lot of you are used to transactions. You might have grown up with that. You might have grown up with your mom or dad um, teaching you that you had to do something to get love. You had to earn love somehow. You have to give love somehow to give something of yourself in order to receive love. That's not unconditional love. That's not divine love. And your twin flame is here to help you erase this pattern from your consciousness. So some of you have been um, giving to your twin flame. You've been over giving in your union. Maybe it's money, maybe it's time, maybe it's compliments, maybe it's pep talks. You've been giving, 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 and it appears that your twin flame has been taking, 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 right? You start to feel like a parent. I'm putting that in quotation marks. Because if you think about it, that's just simply codependent behavior. And giving, 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 doing your twin flame's laundry, um, right, doing their taxes for them, doing all these things for your twin flame without them actually having partnered with you to come to a mutual agreement that this is the thing that you'd be doing and that's the thing they'd be doing. Like, you're not actually helping them at all. You're just... Um, disempowering them by telling them they can't do it on their own and doing it for them. Your parent, um, up to a certain age, is responsible for doing things for you, right? You 
you have diapers when you're a kid, right? Your parent has to change your diapers. You can't feed yourself. You can't prepare food. Your parent has to do that for you up until a certain point. Once you're able to do it on your own, for your parent to continue to do it for you is very codependent. And so a lot of us have grown up with this kind of maybe overbearing codependent parent pattern from our own parents after we're well beyond needing that support, doing it for us, telling us that we're not capable of doing it, so we're going to do it for us. We picked up that pattern, we chose that pattern, what was presented to us, and are somehow subconsciously carrying it on in our twin flame union. Well, folks, (laughs) our twin flame won't have that, right? Your twin flame is your divine counterpart. They're also your ultimate guru. They're your lover for life, right? They're going to teach you everything you need to know. So if you're starting to notice that you're overgiving in order to get them to like you better, or that's actually called control, right? To do something, to get someone to do something is trying to control them in a very underhanded way. You might not even know you're doing this, right? I'm not here to criticize you because I did this, right? I did this with my twin flame, my true twin flame. I mothered him in a way, even though it's not really good parenting, right? Like what kind of parent does that to their grown child? But it was because I had two things happen to me as a child where um, one of my parents, I felt like I had to earn their love and I had to keep giving and doing things to get them to notice me, right? That's one of the reasons why I did that. And the second reason is because I picked up that trait from my other parent who did that to me, right? And so I'm having to reteach or reparent myself. There's nothing, you know, our parents only learn what they learn from their parents, right? So they're not doing it on purpose. No one's doing it on purpose. It's just something that we can heal in our consciousness once we become aware. And once you become aware of something, you're on your way to healing it and dissolving the pattern. So, um, yeah, once you're aware that, ooh, I shouldn't be doing my twin flame as laundry, right? Let let the laundry stay there unless they're asking you to do it, right? Don't give your twin flame money unless they're really asking you to do it. And then even, even then, be careful. Because if your twin flame is consistently needing money or, or resources or even sex in that way from you, they're not meeting their own needs. And to continue to give where you see that it's not reciprocated there's an imbalance in your union and you can heal that by making a new choice within. And if any of this feels uncomfortable, if any of this feels bad, use something called the mirror exercise that is found in this book, Twin Flames, Finding Your Ultimate Lover by Jeff and Shalia. It's on Amazon. You can order paper copy, digital copy, audiobook. Um, really hook yourself up with that book, especially if you want to give yourself a little stocking stuffer for Christmas. It's not much. Um, and, You can learn the mirror exercise and then really choose to invest in yourself. Join Twin Flame Ascension School, get a coach, and start to heal these patterns because I assure you, it's really difficult to do it on your own. In fact, it's next to impossible. Look up a term called co-regulation if you want to know why you require support. Look up co-regulation. It's a psychological term, and I'm going to do another video on that one. So thank you for watching. And I hope to see you. I have a workshop tomorrow. Um, It is a workshop about step four of the mirror exercise. And if you'd like to join that workshop and read more about it, click the link in the description below. That's at 4 o'clock p.m. on Saturday, the 19th of December, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. I'd love to see you there. There's limited space, so uh, please sign up quickly so that you can claim your spot. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.